Hi, it's Maggie the Irish Gypsy here to bring you your March 2021 general readings. We're looking at the first half of March. So from the 1st through the 15th, this reading is for the air sign of Gemini, our beautiful twins. Welcome everyone. I hope you're all safe and well wherever you are. Thanks for uh, hitting that like button, hitting the subscribe and share button if you feel like it. For all that you do in support of this channel, your donations, your comments, feedback, support, reaching out for personal readings, it's all welcome and appreciated. Thank you. So this reading is for the air sign of Gemini, the twins, for the first two weeks of March 2021. That's if your sun, moon, rising, or Venus sign is in uh, Gemini. And it's also relevant if you're cross-watching for a Gemini as well. Um, watching each sign can bring in additional insight or perspective in the situation, so I recommend that you do that because in general readings, of course, are always going to resonate a little differently for everyone. If you find that any of the readings do resonate with you and you'd like to reach out for a personal reading, maybe take a deeper look at something, feel free to email me directly. You can get that information by clicking on the description link below. You'll see my email address there, maggie, the number one mcguire at gmail.com. I'd be delighted to hear from you. I can usually respond within the same day with more information. I do offer a wide variety of readings and I do readings full time. So I'm pretty diligent at working with everyone's schedules to get personal readings set up as quickly as possible. So email me. I'd be happy to work with you. Okay, Gemini, let's see what the first two weeks have in store for you. First two weeks of March, 2021 for Gemini. All right, Gemini, we begin with the Ten of Cups. Sorry, I don't know why I said the Ten of Cups. The Ten of Coins, also known as Pentacles. The Ten of Coins, long-term stability and security. With the King of Swords, there you are, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, Sun, Moon, or Rising. Could be another air sign or somebody manifesting like, you know, the King of Air, King of Swords in your life. Focusing on long-term security and stability, financial, material, emotional even. We have the King of Wands, Leo, Aries, Sagittarius energy with the Six of Wands, victory, triumph, recognition, success, bonuses, promotions, awards, being visible in the public eye, perhaps. The Sun, wow. And the Seven of Cups. From the bottom of the deck, overall energy and focus for the first half of March is the Ace of Cups. Pull another one. The Knight of Cups. New love and romance. An offer of love, support, encouragement. Romantic love, typically. Let's see what's behind that. Another Knight. The Knight of Coins. Knights represent offers and opportunities for change. This is so strange because... I've had a few signs that have very similar threads or meanings, but they don't share the same element. This is kind of similar to Scorpio's, which I did a couple of readings ago, which was very similar to Leo's. So different elements, fire, water, and air here, but a similar theme. Offers and opportunities coming in in the midst of when you're already in perhaps an unsatisfying relationship or job there's some other offers or offers opportunities coming in so there might be some jealousy and competition for some of you it might be that you might be receiving some kind of financial or monetary financial material gains or the opportunity for that, which kind of opens up a lot of new options for you. We do end here with the Sun and the Seven of Cups, which might be wishful thinking and, and paying attention to making sure that your external reality matches your internal reality. But it, it feels like something coming in, an offer or an opportunity for change coming in that might help alleviate a load of some kind or open up more options, particularly if it's money. I mean, you know, the saying goes money can't buy happiness, but what it, it can buy is the freedom to have more choices that you wouldn't have previously had. You know, it, it can open up a whole new horizon of, of choices where 
you choose to do things or have things because you want them and not because you're forced to do them because you don't have enough resources, right? It might be that for some of you too, because, you know, the sun is clarified by the seven of cups. If it was the other way around, if the seven of cups, which is a very dreamy, you know, fantasizing, building castles in the sky kind of energy, thinking of all the beautiful, perfect dreams and options and possibilities. If it came with the sun, that might be paying attention that your wishful thinking doesn't get the better of you because you need to manifest it in your physical reality too. But what came first is the sun, which is an uplifting of maybe previously restrictive energies. And it's clarified by the seven of cups. So whatever is bringing the relief or the healing or the lightening of the load opens up more options and possibilities for you. Let's clarify and see if we can break this down a little bit. Clarify this Ace of Cups, Knight of Cups, Knight of Coins. At first glance, the Ace of Cups and Knight of Cups would be traditional new love and romance, an offer coming in. Um, somebody wearing their heart on their sleeves telling you how much they love you or how they want to, they want to be with you or they want to take you out. They want to get to know you. The Knight of Coins is the Knight of Earth, so it's solid, stable, reliable. It could be an offer that also includes financial and material security as well as emotional security. And that is the focus for you here because over that King of Swords, of course, Gemini Libra, your energy is the Ten of Coins which is not just financial and material abundance or emotional security and abundance, but it's long term. It's having enough now that you're not worried about the future. But let's clarify this, the overall energy, Ace of Cups, Knight of Cups, Knight of Coins. The star, something's coming in, which is restoring hope, faith restored renewed hope faith and optimism trusting in the path that you're on it is also one of the wish fulfillment cards getting what you want trusting that this offer is going to take you to what you want the eight of cups but it's going to require leaving behind that which has not been working for you uh, maybe something you've been attached to even though it hasn't been your nine of cups or ten of cups um, but it requires leaving something behind leaving something behind that isn't working so it requires taking a chance because knights represent offers and opportunities. Knights don't force themselves on you. They present the offer or opportunity, right? And it's up to you whether you take it. If you do, it's going to require leaving or walking away from something. Let's clarify this ace of coins. The Ace of Wands, an exciting new beginning. The Ten of Wands, a long-held heavy burden, feeling overwhelmed, coming to an end. It kind of feels like Gemini... It's a bit similar to Scorpio's, or it could be, you know... Perhaps some of you are in an unsatisfying relationship and you or situation could be a job and you somebody else approaches you with an offer for the opportunity with them to have everything that you don't have in the current situation. You know, feeling like you're not the only one that has to shoulder this burden, all these burdens, all these struggles, all these challenges on your own. There's an offer or opportunity coming in. It feels like for some of you, it's loving or romantic in nature to help relieve this burden, relieve this load and kind of start over again. Might be love and romance that's also got financial backing. Um, it could be somebody coming in and be out of love, maybe not romantic love, but bringing you some offer or opportunity that's going to help you lighten the load in a very practical way, like a gift of money or resources of some kind. Clarify the King of Wands. The Two of Cups. Soulmates, kindred spirits, best friends. The Six of Swords, healing. 
So either this King of Wands is your soulmate individual or they think you are to them and they want to have healing. So this implies that there's some kind of relationship with this King of Wands, Leo, Aries, Sagittarius person, Sun, Moon, or Rising, whether it's a romantic connection or some other kind of connection. They see you as being very connected with them and they want healing. So there's some issues going on within this relationship. They want healing. They want success and victory. Perhaps they want to be seen and acknowledged and appreciated. Because that's, I mean, the Six of Wands comes with them, which is victory, triumph, recognition, appreciation, awards, public visibility. Clarify the Six of Wands. The Three of Cups. And the Emperor. Maybe it's an Aries. Because the Emperor is also the sign of Aries, and it's a King of Wands, a King of Fire as well. Like they want healing and they want that connection again. They just want to have fun. They want to hang out and socialize and have fun. It almost seems like a very un Emperor like behavior. Whoever this person is to you, the relationship looks like it's strained or flawed or on the rocks or something. And they want healing. They want things to go back to the way they were. They want to have fun. They want things to be lightened. They want there to be healing. Um, travel, enjoying your company again. Um, Which is interesting because you could look at this overall energy and focus as perhaps this King of Wands Emperor energy making the offer to have some kind of renewal or reconciliation or fixing energy within an already damaged or distressed relationship. But I feel like the offers and opportunity that is coming in is actually not from this King of Wands Emperor individual. This feels like it's something new, somebody different, something different, an opportunity for change. But in order to take it, it's going to require you turning your back on whatever this situation or relationship is. Hmm. Clarify the sun. the eight of cups so remember that sun is an uplifting of heavy or restrictive or depressive energies it's the light it's the load lightened or even lifted completely but we have the eight of cups again we have the eight of cups twice you've got all this lovely opportunity for change energy maybe romantic in nature maybe partially romantic and partially financial however that works out where you're not going to have to struggle the way that you have been struggling you're feeling like you're carrying everything on your own but it's going to require your leaving a situation you've already been involved in or attached to. The Six of Wands, again, victory, triumph after a challenge. The Star. And the Lovers. The Star, again, is that wish fulfillment. So we have the Star twice, but it came out first from this other offer. And this is all clarifying the Seven of Cups, which is multiple opportunities and of potential, of beautiful potential. But we have the lovers here, which usually represents, yes, a significant, connected, karmic, maybe rather passionate, maybe sometimes turbulent relationship. But it also usually represents being at a crossroads and needing to make a choice within that relationship or about that relationship, which is presenting a dilemma of some kind. So it feels like very much like Scorpio's reading, like you're caught in between. You have this one person, place, situation, relationship, whatever, that you've been involved in. You have a lot invested in it and you have connection there. But it has these serious, significant problems. And here's some other opportunity coming from a different person, place, or situation. And they're offering you, at least on face value, what appears to be everything that you don't currently have. But of course, you'd have to leave this situation to, to, 
to take that one or explore the possibility of that. So what to do? That's kind of the energy. Again, this feels very similar to Scorpio's, which I did like two readings ago. Very similar. Maybe some of you have a sun, moon, rising, or Venus in Scorpio or something of that sort. Or maybe you're involved with a Scorpio, if not a fire sign. So a situation this kind of intensive and personal, you know, the advice or the focus or the answer to go, to stay is going to vary. So what I'm going to ask for is advice and guidance on what the best thing is to do uh, for Gemini or what, what is the thing that Gemini needs to focus on. Goodness, tower. That's funny because, not funny, haha, -ha, but funny advice. Because one of the advice cards for Scorpio was also the tower. The tower is a major arcana card, God, Spirit, Angels, Guides, and it often is an external event that comes in and potentially and breaks something down and, uh, uh, and ends something and is potentially life-changing. Usually it's out of our control. However, when it shows up as um, advice, we're being advised to be the one who destroys this tower so that something truly solid, stable, and reliable can be put in its place or because you need to move on. The judgment, judgment, major, major crossroads energy. I feel like this is a very profound situation here. The Ace of Cups and the Ten of Cups. You have the Ace of Cups as a new offer as well. And the Ace of Cups holds the potential of the Ten of Cups. So if it's new love and romance or some kind of new emotional beginning, it could very well lead to the Ten of Cups, love, happiness, harmony, marriage in a long lasting sort of way. I mean, the Nine of Cups is great too, it's wish fulfillment, but it doesn't have the same kind of sense of permanence that the Ten of Cups does. This is like meeting somebody new that you could end up being with for forever. So judgment is in the middle, which is at a crossroads, making a decision that's going to change your life. You're not going to be able to reverse it after you make up your mind, meaning if you choose to stay in a broken situation, that's probably the way it's going to stay. If you choose to leave, a whole new path. But you need to, it's obvious that you need to end something, walk away, turn your back on something, break something down in order to have this. Because, you know, on one side, we have this beautiful, lovely new beginnings and happy home energy. And on the other side, it's the tower. It's going to require a breakdown, a leaving. And in the middle is that crossroads card judgment you're being called called to action what are you going to do let's clarify the tower what needs to end here what needs to be broken down just curious what is that tower card the devil so this is an ongoing situation which we can already tell from this ten of wands heavy burden you've been carrying for a while a toxic imbalanced situation but addictive there's something that you're getting out of it otherwise you wouldn't be in the same circle the same cycle over and over again but it's negative it's toxic it feels like i mean it's a strong enough message that for the majority of you for whom this resonates it's about leaving this current situation because even though I can see the connection and even caring and love here, it's toxic, which means it's not going to change unless somebody makes a change. Now, I'll say this because I said it in the Scorpio reading. Sometimes leaving a relationship that's dysfunctional is what causes the other person to make the change that could bring the two of you back together again. It does sometimes happen that way, but <laughs> most often in the movies. It, it can happen in real life. It doesn't often, but sometimes it does. But any way you look at it, the fundamental advice energy is that whatever it is and has been, that has to end. That has to go. And it, and it has to be completely broken down. There is another offer here that looks really lovely. But of course, it's going to require some difficult choices. So... Negative cycles have to end. Fundamental energy here. And even though the tower is challenging to go through, whether you're the one that initiates it or spirit's the one that initiates it, on the other side of it potentially is Ace of Cups, Ten of Cups, 
Knight of Cups, the Star. So, free will. All right, I'm going to end it there, right? Because just like some of the other readings for the March, um, beginning of March, I could really do a deep dive on this for like an hour. Um, it's so fascinating. All right, we're going to stop there, Gemini. That is your reading for the first half of March. I hope it made sense and was helpful to somebody out there. Um, again, if you are interested in reaching out for a personal reading, maybe you'd like to take a little deeper look at something, uh, reach out for a personal reading, feel free to email me directly at maggie, the number one mcguire at gmail.com. You can also see that contact detail information by clicking on the description link below. Um, I'd be most happy to hear from you. Delighted to work with you. I will see you all in a couple of weeks for the March mid-month readings. Until then, stay safe and well. Be blessed. Try to be at peace. And I hope to see you back here again soon. Bye-bye.